Morning, something a little bit different today. As you know, I've got a new coach, Alex Co. He's been looking at the power numbers and all sorts of different things. I've sent him some videos on the bike as well. Because I've been suffering with a little bit of an injury, or a few injuries actually, a little bit of a hip issue, bit of an adductor problem on the left leg. So today, I'm here at Sub 4. We've seen some biomechanical specialists. We're gonna have a full biomechanical assessment. These guys look after cyclists, runners, footballs, all sorts. So let's see if we can figure out and see what's happening. Right, we're here, we're at Sub 4, we're all set up. This here is Clifton Bradley. Yes, I know he's got the same surname as me, and that's because he's my uncle. So I'm very lucky to have one of the best podiatry, biomechanical experts in the country as my uncle. Unfortunately, the clinic is not too far away from where I live. This is Sub 4 in Staffordshire. Clifton looks after a lot of runners, footballers, cyclists, all sorts, and anyone else who's just got injuries, I guess. You will see, it says 357.88, is that? That was Clifton in 1985. It was the indoor mile record holder. And you ran for the country as well, right? Yeah, yeah. ran for England and Great Britain. And, um, and I was training for the 88 Olympics. Uh, got injured just before and uh, just after I did the 357 mile. And uh, sadly finished my career. So I became a practitioner dealing in sports injuries. And as you guys know, I've got a little bit of an injury myself. I've got an adductor problem on the, on the left side. I've got a hip problem as well. I've also, when you look at the power data, you'll see that I'm putting out a lot more power on one side than the other as well. So we're going to have a look, I think, at what leg length, pelvic asymmetry. Well, I think what we're going to do is um, just do a little bit of an assessment and see if we can find something. Because obviously you've got some overuse there. So what we're going to try and do is see if we can find any um, pelvic imbalances, etc. Because the upper body, the passion unit, sits on the pelvis and the legs articulate from the pelvis. So if we use that as a foundation to get your pelvis right, uh, hopefully it will help you get rid of your tissue stress. Let's get this assessment done. So, uh, yeah, so we want the pelvis tilted forward uh, by about 8 to 10 degrees. But you're actually only tilted forward by 3. So left side's rotated backwards. That's quite common if there's an asymmetry because the pelvis will adapt. And your right side is at a normal angle. So that's, that's eight tilted forward, that's three tilted forward. It gives you a five degree of pelvic torsion. So straight away you found a reason there why you could have a difference in power. So next thing is the uh, right side of the pelvis is dropped to the right. Um, so the sacral base is tilted down to the right. This is the sacral base. Yeah. Each ring of the pelvis is an anonymous bone. And you want them to be the same, obviously. So as I look at the top of your pelvis, you're high on the left. Uh, as I look at the sacral base, you're high on the left. As I look at the legs, this leg is hyperextended back. So the left is a little bit longer on the couch. Let's look at some rotation. So you've got some fairly normal rotation there at the hip joints. Yeah, a little bit of excessive rotation there. When the pelvis rotates backwards, the acetabulum, the hip joint, internally rotates. Yeah. So you'll get a little bit more internal rotation on that leg. Okay. Resist me pushing down, you ready? Yep. Okay, so that glute is weak. Right, now bend the knee. Okay. And try and, try and stop me. So your TFL is strong. I need to bring it. Ah. So you should, on both sides, be about 8 to 10 tilted forward. Yeah. You arrived with force into the hip joint on the longer leg, which had rotated it back. Yeah. Now we've raised it even more, it's gone flat. So if we do the other side. So when you've got a leg length inequality, your body's really clever at adapting to balance the centre of mass. Yeah. And it can use the pelvis as a way of kind of like keeping this it's stable. It's just like keeping this stable. So your eyes can scan the horizon. Think of, think of a hunter-gatherer on two legs. Yeah. And what's kept us alive for millions of years is being able to observe. So the body prioritizes this and uses knee flexion and extension of pelvic rotation. To adapt, to stabilize your body. To adapt, yeah. yeah. So you have an abnormal response on here. If you go yeah. back to the other side, and you have a better response there. 
So this tells me that this is a, a bony difference with another, Some, something you've been born with. Yeah. And, and, if, and if you think about, um, you know, we've, we've revolved for millions of years on natural surfaces. Now we've brought in concrete, which is geometric with high energy return. We now have to adapt to our own internal asymmetry as opposed to the asymmetry in the environment, you know. Yeah. So I've got like an unsymmetrical system on a symmetrical surface. Yeah, that's causing problems as well. And a bike, which is obviously precision engineering, and you put in your, you know, ancient, not, not you personally, sorry, but <laughs> our human, our <laughs> as human beings, you know, we, you know, our, our evolution has occurred over millions of years. And we put that in this modern world, and there's no reason, there's no wonder that there's uh, tissue stress. You know? So just thought, obviously, a lot of the, the riding I do now in, the, in this virtual riding is indoors, and the bikes, I, I don't use a rocker plate, so the bike is static. Yeah, essentially. Whereas obviously when I'm out on the road, the bike moves a bit more and I can move on the bike. Yeah. But now I'm on a static bike, do you think that could be exacerbating the problem in some way? Or? Well, what you've got on the static bike is obviously the engineering of the bike, which is, you know, starts symmetrical with the, with the pedals, yeah. etc. Uh, and then we're putting the engineering of living tissue on this inanimate, you know, fine engineering of the bike. And there's a conflict between the two. So what we have to try and do as biomechanics is kind of like understand your asymmetry and then trick the bike into thinking that you are symmetrical on it. So you've got the symmetry of the bike, the new symmetry of you with the correction that you're going to have, and I would suggest having a raise on that right side, whether you put it okay. under the shoe or in the shoe, that's your decision. Yeah. So they should then marry up together and the excessive tissue stress and the asymmetry of load that you've experienced in your testing should improve. Ooh. Right, we are back from seeing Clifton over at sub four. Yeah, we're all good. Now, why did this all start? Well, as I've said before, I've got this new coach, Alex Co, the endurance sports coach. Coach is James Barnes, James Bond, I say that every time. James Barnes and a load of other uh, top level Zwifters as well. But I've been having this problem on the left side with the left adductor, but also I've had a hip problem on the right hand side. Uh, just a couple of things were going on. I sent a few videos to Alex Co. first of all, just from the side and from the back, and we're sitting on the bike, and he said it was really obvious that there was a bit of an imbalance there, probably a leg length difference. Uh, Alex suspected that my left leg was longer. Also, if you take a look at my cleats, this left hand cleat is really scuffed compared to the right. In the videos, there was some really obvious things that was happening with the pelvis when sat in the saddle as well. So actually, we'd already made some changes. So I take these recently, these are form bike fitting shims, wedges, basically for SPD SL pedals. There's two wedges that come in this box. There's a three mil and a two mil wedge as well. So although Clifton at support, he reckons I've probably got around about five mil difference in the left in the leg, left leg being longer, that's what I meant to say. We're actually just gonna put three mil initially under the right hand cleat there just to try and raise that up and improve the pelvic balance as it sits on the saddle. But also, I am gonna be adding this raise into my existing orthotics as well, because actually, I've had this problem in the past and I kind of just switched off from it, I guess, but I already use these things, these orthotics in my shoes, and these are actually 14 years old. Clifton made these for me 14 years ago and they're still going. And I've had them in all my bike shoes for the last 15 years, but actually there's no heel raise on there. This is purely just to support the arch, support the foot, put my foot in a, a more efficient, better position in the pedal, but it doesn't raise up the right hand side. So hopefully by addressing that both in every day, so I'm also gonna have a pair of these that I put in my everyday shoes as well as being on the bike, hopefully it's gonna reduce the injuries. And most importantly, deliver more power to the pedals as well. Because as I said before, when I look at the power output, whether that be on the stationary bike that's connected to my Wahoo Kicker, or when I've been out on the road all summer, there's been a quite a smart difference between the power between my left leg and the right leg when I'm riding. And again, I just want to improve the efficiency and give my body every opportunity it can to be as efficient as possible. So let's crack on. Let's get these things back into the shoes and get this right hand side wedged up. Right, so that is it. It's time to crack on, see how it feels. Um, I do expect, or we do expect some soreness, some changes and adaptations. This may take a couple of weeks. It'd be interesting to have a look at the power data between left and right, how that evens out over the next couple of weeks as well, particularly as we start to get back 
racing in the road in spring. So we'll see how that goes. But for now, zone two ride, one hour, recovering from Richmond last night. Let's get on with it. So that's it, session done. Been a really interesting day with Cliff over at Sub 4. Also, I have got some future videos coming up of the training programs that I'm gonna be up to over the festive period with Alex Co. If you want any more information on Alex Co, the coach, Cliff at Sub 4 with the biomechanic side, or you wanna look at the data, again, I've left some links in the description down below. I'll see you guys soon for another video and an update on how this is all going.